You know, I think with Diana's report kind of highlights that there's a lot of changing needs in the housing market. What would happen if Fannie and Freddie leave conservatorship? Well, first, I think there's a huge amount of change going on in housing markets, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to get into the fintech space. But, uh, you know, with respect to Fannie and Freddie, first, it's great that people are, again, focusing on getting these companies on permanent footing. Um, and there's a lot of complications that will come with that. The politics around them is very complicated, and what I would call the corporate finance aspects are very complicated. Uh, getting these companies uh, back politically, but also uh, structuring them in a way that they can support the market yeah. without raising mortgage prices a lot, exactly. that would be a challenge. So we want basically low mortgage rates for the home buyers, the government guarantee that has come, but without having to, to bail them out again. Um, if we put them in private hands, they need a lot more capital. And if they do go that route, it will enrich a lot of hedge funds who have bet on this this happening. So how do you expect that to play out politically over the next couple of years? So obviously the politics are complicated. People have been working on this issue for the last 10 years since the companies were taken over by the government. But I think when it comes to the corporate finance part of this, policymakers really need to think about creating business models that will attract 150 or $200 billion of capital. They're going to have to give investors the opportunity to actually get a return on that. And they're going to have to do that in a way that doesn't require homeowners to pay dramatically higher mortgage rates. Why do people say homeowners might have dramatically higher mortgage rates if this happens? Well, it really comes down to what are the capitalization requirements for these new entities? In other uh, words, how much money do they need to? Because right now they're sweeping all their profits to the Treasury. They're not really retaining anything. And so if they were standalone firms, how much money do you think they need to raise to make sure that they're viable? The general consensus is about 150 to $200 billion for Fannie and Freddie together. That's a lot of money. But you know, that's still less than what some people have advocated for in the past. So it's all really a question of what's that percentage of capital that uh, policymakers ultimately decide. And I think, you know, the, the current regulator has done a lot of work in this area, and I think people are starting to triangulate to a number that probably could have a relatively modest impact on, 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 on mortgage holders. Oh, I was going to say, so let's bring it back to that. So why would that move towards privatization, towards having to raise a lot of uh, capital? Why would that mean that there's a bigger spread in what a typical mortgage rate is over the benchmark treasury bond? It's all just a question of, you know, today uh, uh, mortgage rates are, are set in part by the GSEs, Franny and Freddie, based on what what they essentially pretend their capital is, huh. uh, which is essentially 2 to 3 percent. If policymakers were required to hold 5 percent or 10 percent capital, the only way to make a business model viable is to charge more money uh, for mortgages. And so that's one real possibility, you think, if we go this route? That, that is a possibility, and I think that's one of the difficult questions that policymakers need to wrestle to the ground. Plus, I wonder if the, what the Treasury would think about the loss of funds. I mean, they're, they're taking in quite a bit from these two, aren't they? They're taking in quite a lot. I mean, the two companies have returned billions and billions of dollars of, of, of dividends to, to the Treasury. But I do think that policymakers, including this administration, have concluded that that's not a good long-term solution. We need a kind of right. permanent foundation for housing finance, which touches 20% of the national economy.